okay, behind me is a 2023 Polestar 2, and it's all-wheel drive. Let's take a look at it. So I like the way the Polestar looks. To me, it's listed as a crossover SUV type, but I think it looks more like a traditional sedan. And I really like the way that it looks. Some people do, some people don't, but overall, I think it's a nice looking car. So this one here has the dual electric motors. So it's all wheel drive, 402 horsepower, 75 kilowatt hour battery. That's gonna get you 260 miles of range. This, uh, this one is on 20 inch wheels. Uh, if you do get smaller wheels, of course you'll get better range. This one, the base price on it is $51,900. And the one that I'm driving right here comes in at $67,450. So let's take a look at the trunk. Okay, so the button is un up under by the license plate. And this does have a decent amount of room, actually. That's kind of impressive, especially if you take this off, then you've got plenty of room back here. Um, I thought this was just a trunk, but it is a hatch. So that was kind of surprising to me. I really couldn't tell. Uh, it actually did just look like there was gonna be a trunk opening. So um, that's pretty cool. Looks like you do have a pass through to the second row. Um, but if you are traveling and you need a little bit more room for your luggage, you're gonna need to take that um, cover off of there. All right, so let's see anything under here. So that flips up so you have a divider. So maybe you put your groceries and stuff there so they don't slide around. And then even farther underneath here, there you've got a charging cable, a little bit more storage space, not a whole lot. All right, moving to the inside. Uh, this is pretty nice. This material is a uh, cloth type material. You've got leather here, vegan leather, and another material right here, which is okay. Here's your memory function for your seats. And this is just a hard plastic and a little bit area for storage. This, the seats on this are powered and it looks like it does have lumbar. And the seats are really nice. They're pretty comfortable so far. Felt like the, uh, the bottom was a little hard, but we'll find out when we take that out driving and see how it holds up. There is the Polestar interior. Of course, there's the driver's display. And you've got the infotainment screen there, or it's about a tablet size. Um, I'd say maybe 12 inches, but maybe a little bit less than that. And there is your gear shifter it's pretty easy you pull back for drive forward for reverse and your park button and there's controls for the stereo your uh, climate control is down here at the bottom of the screen most of the time which is pretty nice this does have a g meter and you do have launch so you can actually check your times that's pretty cool um, not a whole lot going on here. It's pretty simplistic in here, so it's pretty nice. Um, uh, my seat's pretty much where I'm gonna be driving at. Looks like there's a decent amount of room. Do have two vents right here. I, I kind of like these, uh, they're the directional things that they have here, but I would um, prefer them to be in the B pillars. I think that would be a lot better situation. This does have heated rear seats and there's a 12 volt plug in there. I don't see any USBs back here, which could be a downfall pull star. They may be here. I just do not see them. Nope. I don't see them anywhere. So I'm gonna guess that they don't have USBs back here. So we're gonna have to knock them for that. Now, decent amount of space. Uh, you know, there's about a couple inches there, no problem, two and a half inches or so. That's pretty good. Yeah, this is not very good. This piece right here, my hair is scraping it. I barely even get my fingers in between there and you see my hair is not very long. Um, 
So yeah, it's a little tight headspace back here. I am about six foot, so if you are taller than six foot, you're gonna have a little bit of a tight fit back here. Okay, that's the inside and the outside, so let's go take it for a drive. The steering wheel is in a good spot. I can see the display very easily, which is good. All of this stuff is really close and nice. But down here, there is an armrest right here, and then the center console, and I want to rest my hand on the side of this center console, on the passenger side of this console. <laughs> it, I, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a comfortable. It's comfortable. It's not like it feels awkward or anything, but I, I don't know. I, there should be like a um, rubber or something here. So we are going to do a launch here. Let's go to the G meter. One, two, three. Yeah, I think I saw about 0.7 on there. So that's pretty interesting. But there seems to be a little lag in the foot pedal. So when you first start to push on it, it doesn't seem like it really wants to do anything yet. The farther you push it down, then it's kind of like, okay, we're going, we're going. Um, so I would like to have that pedal tightened up just a little bit. So whenever you press on it, it really, it just starts to go instead of having to keep pushing down farther and farther. All right, so let's take some curves here. These are 25 mile an hour curves. And that was at about 40. All right, I always slow down for this blind corner because we really can't see what's going on around here. came through here a little bit ago and there was a semi truck on the road not in this exact spot but on the other side but this is really doing very very well yeah yep it, it holds it holds it tight it does well slow down through here the seats are fairly comfortable. Um, I, these are another set of those seats where I'm not sure road tripping is going to be that great. Um, I don't feel that comfortable that I think, oh, yeah, this is going to be no problem driving 300 miles or 600 miles. Um, you might be okay for the 300 miles but they just feel hard in the seat area and not as cushy as what some of the other ones are. All right, yep, that did well around those corners. This whole little cockpit area um, is, is nice and comfortable, easy to get to. I like the size of this screen. It's not big and overpowering. Um, it is a very nice size screen. Steering wheel feels pretty good. It is a little harder than I would expect, especially at this price point. It, um, it, does, it is a little soft, but I would expect it to have a little bit more, you know, softness to it. But other than that, it's it's a nice car to drive. Uh, I don't feel, I, I don't know, I feel a little cramped in my knee area because of this console that kind of goes at this angle. So it kind of pushes, feels like my knees are kind of squished together and they're not, you know, I'm not able to kind of more relax a little bit, but it's not um, awkward, doesn't feel bad. Um, I'm just have my knee resting against um, this side piece. Regenerative braking is strong um, and good. It is pretty good to see. It does not bring me to a stop. So I think I, I ought to turn the creep off. I think the creep is still on. So you can shut the creep off and then you won't roll. You'll actually come to a stop and not move. This is a good car. It's it's got it's got enough oomph to it. 
Um, I was really worried. I had never driven a Polestar before and I wasn't sure what to expect power wise. Um, you see the range numbers are not generally as good as some of the others and the power numbers seem like they were a little bit lower, but um, this one having a dual motor and 400 uh, plus horsepower, you know, you're, it, it does, it does really well and really does get up and um, move. Really enjoy driving this car. Well, so yeah, I just don't like how the accelerator pedal, I just don't like that. I don't like that I have to push it so far down before it wants to really take off. It's like I driving right now, I feel like I've got the accelerator halfway to the floor. And although I only have to press it about another inch for it to accelerate, it's not getting full acceleration. And that first inch or so of the pedal you it barely moves you and i i don't like that i want it to go as soon as i touch the accelerator i want it to start to move and this one doesn't want to do that overall i do enjoy this um so if you're looking for a polestar 2 i would strongly suggest getting the all-wheel drive version and have some fun in it and enjoy it I will see you in the next one. So just behind me is a 2023 Lexus RZ450E. It's a fully electric Lexus. Now, its sister car is the Toyota BZ4X, and its cousin car would be the Subaru Solterra. So let's take a look at this Lexus and see which one of those you like better. So right off the bat, I like the way the Lexus looks in the front way better than the BZ4X or the Solterra. This blue color is really nice. It's kind of a soft metallic blue. And then you go down and you've got these gray 20 inch wheels look really nice. This one is all wheel drive. It has two electric drive motors totaling 308 horsepower. You got 71 kilowatt hour battery, and that is good for about 196 miles on these 20 inch wheels. Now, the base price on this is gonna be <laughs> right around $64,000, and this one that I am driving right here comes in at $67,000. So let's go take a look at the cargo area and then we'll take a look at the inside. Pop the trunk. All right, that's a pretty good size cargo area. Not too bad. It's not huge by any means, but you're looking at about probably four feet deep, about five wide at its widest points. And of course you can drop the seats down and get you some more space, but it's not too bad. You could probably put um, about two or three duffel bags in there in a suitcase, shouldn't be a problem. So the door handles don't actually pull out. They don't pull like this. There is a button on the backside that you push and it electronically opens the door and then you pull. Inside here, so we have a white leather across the top of here. And I know it doesn't really look that white, but it actually is when you see that interior in there. And this is a blue soft Alcantara. And then you've got a softer plastic down below with the cup holders, all your window buttons. This is the switch to open the door. It's electronic. You just push it and it opens the door. Of course, you got powered seats with lumbar. You have more Alcantara seats. These so far have been pretty comfortable. They are heated and cooled. And I'm gonna make sure that I get my butt cooled off today because the sun came out and it is warming up. Here is your driver's display right there. And of course you've got your eye tracker. There is the steering wheel. It is a really nice soft touch steering wheel. It feels really, really good. We'll get in the back driver's seat is set about where I'm going to be sitting. We're going to get in the back here. More Alcantara in the back. There is heated seats in the second row here. 
We also got two USB-C and your vents and look how much space there is. Look how much space there is between me and the seat in front of me. That's insane. That's like six inches. I mean, that's crazy. How much more space do you need? Here's a glimpse of the front again. And there is your selector. And with this one, you actually push it down and then turn it. I don't want to do that right now because I'm not in the front seat, so I don't think it'll do anything anyway. But then you got your traction control button here, your auto hold here, and electronic parking brake. Two cup holders back here in the back. Like I said, more Alcantara all the way around. You've got your fold down armrest with two cup holders in it. And that's all you got back here. But these, everything is Alcantara back here. All of this is Alcantara. So that is where your $67,000 price point is coming in at. Pan around to this other side, you see this beautiful paint. This car is actually really nice. Looks so much better than the BZ4X, but it's also a lot more expensive. All right, that's the inside and the outside, so uh, let's go drive this thing. I don't know if you can see in front of me, but we are right behind a Polestar. And of course, I have it in sport mode because that's how we do it. We drive everything in sport mode. Most of the time, we don't all like to be this close to each other because we all like to drive fast and take these tight little corners that we've got up here we just like to have a little fun with these and let you guys actually know what we think about them. This has heads up display also. I just saw it and just noticed it. It is very bright and very easy to see. Um, I just happen to not been looking at it yet. Wow, that is pretty cool. I've never had driven anything with heads up display yet. So this is my first time and this one looks great. Uh, so first thing that I just noticed is this has a propulsion sound. I will see if you can hear it in just a minute whenever we do a launch. But I'm pretty sure I just heard a propulsion sound. And then you do have paddles for regenerative braking. Over the railroad tracks. Good, comfortable, easy. So you have selectable regenerative braking with the paddles so that's pretty cool i like a, i like it to be pretty heavy always pull up here make sure nobody else is going to be behind me i pull down here at the bottom of this hill and we will go for a launch uh, you can actually watch the all-wheel drive system when we do this already let's get down and we are stopped one two three Oh yeah, that's good. That was a good strong pull, real strong pull. So as I said earlier, it's only 308 horsepower, but they really <laughs> did a good job with that. Wow, impressed, impressed. And overall, so far, I am pretty impressed with this car. It's really comfortable. Uh, looks excellent. The colors that they used in here with this uh, blue Alcantara and this slightly off-white leather interior or vegan leather interior, it just looks amazing. Of course, there's plenty of drive modes to choose from, but of course, we are going to stay in sport. And let's go take some curves and let's carve up some road. This heads up display is pretty cool. So it um, tells me what gear I'm in, what direction I'm going, the speed I'm going, how close the car in front of me is, where whether I'm touching the lines or not, and whether I'm going over the speed limit or not. So it shows the speed limit sign and it's red when you're going over the speed limit 
and it's white when you're driving the speed limit or under. Um, so pretty much on this drive is going to be red. <laughs> I think mean, people are getting a kick out of watching all of these cars come cruising by. So take a tight corner here, 25 mile an hour corner, took it at 45, not a problem feels good. Seats are hugging me in really well, keeping me planted. Uh, they are, very, like I said, very comfortable so far. Yeah, this is definitely has a propulsion sound. The Mach-E uses the GT500 exhaust sound, so you, it sounds really good. This just sounds like a small, low growl. It doesn't sound bad, uh, it doesn't sound bad. It just has a low growl to it. Now, I am probably a little different than a lot of EV drivers. A lot of them do not like to have the propulsion sound on. They like to have it off. Me and my wife, we both like to drive with the propulsion sound on because I like to, when I hit the accelerator, I like to know that I'm doing something, that I'm accelerating and I'm using some power. I wanna hear the power but I do not want to hear exhaust. I don't want to hear a loud exhaust, so I like this little sound. It, sound, it, it just works for me. Lexus is a brand that has a loyalty following. If you are a loyal Lexus person, then you probably will really enjoy this car and the price point is not gonna scare you away because Lexuses have always had a higher price point because they are in a higher echelon of cars. You know, so I, to me, and a lot of people would, would probably argue, but for me and the type of vehicles and price points that I look at, I put Lexus up there with BMW and Mercedes. Not They're not quite, as high and but I feel to me it's the same Lexus or um, BMW or any of those I to me the price that's what you're looking at and you're expecting good quality and Lexus puts out good quality so I am really enjoying this car this is a whole lot of fun Okay, traction control is now turned off. I wonder if we can kick the back end out a little bit. Let's go. Yeah! <laughs> I'm sure you guys hear that little chirp, 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 chirp. It didn't want to let me have a full spin and slide of the wheels, um, but it did let me kind of bark them a little bit. Everything here is, you can see very well. You can see the instrument cluster really well. You can see this screen is great. It looks like probably about 15 inches or so. Um, all your climate stuff is right across the bottom. All the major buttons that you would need. It works really well. And I just feel that this is a very, very good car for those who want an electric car and don't mind paying the little bit higher price tag to get a little bit more luxury. So this was the 2023 Lexus RZ450E and I will see you in the next one. All right, we are gonna take a look at the 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6 all wheel drive. Now the styling on this has been somewhat uh, controversial. It's kind of up to you what you feel. I do, uh, I don't mind the front end. Kind of looks like maybe like a little bit of a Kia EV6 front end. And if you walk around, you end up with kind of a bubble shape. Actually kind of looks a little bit like a Mercedes uh, from the side. Not sure which one, the EQ something, <laughs> the EQE maybe. And then you get to the back. Now the back, 
to me, it's not my favorite part, but it looks like a little bit of 1990s sob. That's what I see with that big duck fin tail or duck bill tail, whatever they want to call that. Um, yeah, so that's my thing. I feel that it looks like an old 90s sob in the rear end, but a lot of people are starting to like it. Regardless, this thing is crazy efficient and can get crazy miles on the highway. So this one here has 320 horsepower. Like I said, it is all wheel drive. It's got 446 foot pounds of torque, 77 kilowatt hour battery. And since this is the all wheel drive with the 20 inch wheels, it is going to get 270 miles. So this Ionic 6, uh, very comfortable in here. And as you can see, you've got a huge screen here. I think it's like 30 some inches. It does split into two screens, one for the driver's display and one for the overall uh, infotainment center. Uh, it does work pretty good right now. I've got our EV range thing popped up here. It's got multiple drive modes, uh, including sport mode, which is I am in right now. This one does have, is all wheel drive, has 320 horsepower. It also has 446 foot pounds of torque. Now, this one does come with a 77 kilowatt hour battery and with the 20 inch wheels that are on this one, that will get you about 270 miles. Now, this is one of the most efficient electric vehicles to date and it is about the same as the Tesla Model 3. So, that 270 miles on these 20 inch wheels, if you go to a rear wheel drive instead of all wheel and you go down to 18 inch wheels, 361 miles 361 miles out of range on this same car now um, like we talked about it's you know kind of subject to outside appearance but really are you on the outside no you're on the inside so you want to feel see how things feel for you as the driver on the inside who cares what it looks like on the outside you're not going to see it while you're driving it so basically it's set up pretty nice. It does have a nice compartment down underneath the console. It has this long running console right here, which is okay. Um, and a few, your window buttons are all right here in the middle, which is decent. It's not bad. Um, and a couple cup holders. So the seating positions are pretty good. I'm in a pretty decent spot right now. I feel pretty good. And I don't know. You know, I, I like it. It does accelerate very well. Definitely um, one of the better accelerating ones that I have ever, that I have driven so far. Um, the range, it's, you know, kind of up to you. Do you like that range? Do you want that efficiency? Do you need that much range? I actually don't, so I would get the all wheel drive instead of getting the rear wheel drive, but not everybody's the same some people would like to be able to drive 300 miles without stopping but overall i do like it i do like the acceleration everything is smooth it does ride very well it's quiet in here um can't hardly hear the wind on the outside at all everything is laid out very easy to find easy to reach and all the buttons work very well so Really, I don't have a whole lot more to say about that. So if you are thinking about the Ionic 6, I would say if you're okay with the exterior, buy it because the inside is very nice, especially with this white interior. It looks great. We have a 2023 Kia EV6 all-wheel drive GT. Let's check it out. So I really like the front end of these Kia EV6s. I think it looks really stylish. It's really aerodynamic, kind of gives you that Tesla Model S vibe. And as you come around to the side, you know, it does sit a little bit higher. It is kind of technically a crossover SUV type. The giveaway that this is a GT and not a GT line is those neon green brake calipers basically anybody sees those coming down the road they know that it is a gt now this gt 
has 576 horsepower. On a 77 kilowatt hour battery, it only gets 206 miles of range versus um, a standard Kia EV6 or even the GT Line EV6. It's going to get a lot more range than that. But because this is all wheel drive, it is on 21 inch wheels, and it is a lot more powerful machine, you're going to get less mileage. All right, so let's take a look at the back. Not a huge amount of room, but a decent amount of room. It's not very high to this cover here. You're looking at about maybe a foot and a half to the cover, but as long as you have that retracted, you can get a few bigger items in there. Not a huge amount of room back here, but that's not what you're buying a GT for. All right, let's go take a quick look at this interior. The interior is a little crazy. So you have got these Recaro style seats. They are Alcantara. The neon green paint is followed up in the stitching of these seats. It looks really nice. It's really cool look to it. I like that they did something different than red like a lot of manufacturers do. See the stitching's even on the steering wheel. You got the GT button right there. You got a Meridian sound system in here. There's your giant screen, very similar to the Hyundai Ionic 6 and the Ionic 5. It's your center console. You got your power button and your gear knobs. You got auto hold. You also have a camera button. There's your wireless phone charger. And then you have all of your climate control buttons across the bottom, which I really like. A little bit of storage down below. These seats are manual though. You do have a bar underneath to slide it forward. This handle here lifts, raises the seats and then you have your backrest there. All right, let's hop into the back. Back, you can see, same thing. Nice stitching, looks really stylish. No vent back here, but there is two USB-C ports here. The vents are actually in the door, so each person has their own that they can blow on them, which is really nice. I do like this better than it being in this console, like most cars are. All right, my seat is positioned where I would sit. Look at this. <laughs> You're looking at it almost a foot of leg space and that's even I can stretch out a little bit and I'm still have about eight inches ten inches so there is a lot of room in this thing uh, head wise you can see here we've got about two inches two and a half inches so doing really well there so um, plenty of room in the back of this does have a center armrest with cup holders so that's good this will slide back you can put some stuff down in there if you wanted to but that is it for the inside okay so that's the inside and the outside so let's go take this for a drive all right we are heading out a um, couple things that i just noticed is is getting into this it's hard to get the steering wheel for me in a comfortable position without blocking part of the driver's display. So that might be a consideration. And then these seats, even though they are the Recaro racing seats, if you've had them before, you know that they are a little stiff, a little hard, might soften up a little bit with more use, but I'm having an issue getting comfortable. The bottom bolster on the, left side is pushing into the side of my leg and the one on the right side is shoving my wallet into my hip bone so take your wallet out of your pants would be a suggestion all right let's go down here and get to the bottom here 
we'll do quick zero to 60 GT drive mode. We go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Wow. That has got to be definitely somewhere around three and a half seconds. Wow. GT mode will throw you in your seat. That's awesome. The closest thing that I felt to that uh, in a while was uh, driving the Rivian, and that was 835 horsepower, so you can imagine how that felt, and this was pretty close to that. Uh, it almost gives you that disoriented feel uh, whenever you take off, like your brain doesn't know what to do. And yeah, this it really accelerates very, very easily. Uh, the regenerative braking is great. I, I love it. Um, it feels really good. And now we've got some corners. Now these are 25 mile an hour corners. Um, all of us have been taking them a lot faster than that. But we also have some police out here, so we have to be very careful. This will take corners without any issues. So this one's a little tight one. Be a little careful here. All right, we're well, taking a 25 mile an hour curve at 50. 53, actually. This is insane. Wow. <laughs> this power is crazy. Woo! Oh, wow. I am loving this. Other than the issue with the instrument panel, um, driver, or the issue with the driver's display and not being able to see it real clearly, these seats, I, I really don't think they'd be comfortable for long trips, but I'm having a lot of fun in this, and it really does hold you in to your seat in those corners. Um, I also forgot to say, this does have a heads up display. So it has my speed down there and it also has the speed limit sign showing. It flashes red if you go over the speed limit, which it's been flashing red the entire time. <laughs> because how do you drive these cars without going over the speed limit? <laughs> it almost takes your breath away. It's crazy. Love it. So GT mode is ridiculously fast. That's where you get that full 576 horsepower. You can definitely feel it. But yeah, it's just it's an awesome machine. I know a lot of people are not going to be real fond of the uh, 206 miles of range. I mean, it's really low. I'm sure you could probably get more out of that if you weren't driving in GT mode and, and things like that. Um, and if you are really worried about the range, get a regular GT line. Kind of gives you a GT appearance without as much power and a lot less um, cost. And we'll do one more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So enough of that before we some cop drives by and sees us and we get into a little bit of trouble. But overall, this is a great car. Uh, I love it. The power is awesome. If you really are interested in a Kia EV6 and you want the max power and you don't care about the range and you want something that looks cool, you got this green stitching, you got the green brake calipers, get you the GT. It's a lot of fun. All right, I will see you in the next one.